Hi, my name is Christy. Um, I'm making a video because I'm going to be having LASIK eye surgery next Tuesday. Today is Thursday. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing glasses because they said that you can't actually wear contacts for a week beforehand. So I started wearing glasses on Monday. Um, just make a little recording, tell you, and I'll keep you updated after the surgery. Uh, tell you a little bit about my experience with the LASIK. So, uh, you have your, um, consultation, which is free if you go to the Canberra Eye Hospital. Um, and they basically measure your eye, um, and check your script and, uh, measure the thickness of your cornea. Um, it's very important if you want to have LASIK eye surgery that you do have a thick cornea um, because otherwise it's more prone to being structurally damaged during the LASIK surgery because they are actually taking out part of your cornea and reshaping that. Um, luckily, I do have a thick cornea, so I am a good candidate for LASIK eye surgery. Um, I have a minus four script in my left eye and a minus four script in my right eye. Um, I do have a little bit of astigmatism, um, but they said that that's actually fine. Um, I also have a medical condition called ITP, which means my blood doesn't clot properly. Um, but that is also not an issue with the LASIK eye surgery because there's actually no bleeding. They're cutting the actual, uh, layer that covers the eye. So there's no blood vessels or anything there. It's just that bit over, um, the black bit. Um, so the process of the LASIK eye surgery is once you have had that initial consultation, they will basically talk you through the different options of LASIK surgery. In Australia, in Canberra, there are three different types you can have. You can have PRK, which is a surface treatment, so there's actually no cutting of the eye. It's all reshaped underneath the eye. However, the recovery time for that is eight weeks, and you can only do one eye at a time generally because obviously you won't be able to see for eight weeks. Um, the second one is basically where they make a flap with the laser and then the, so they make a flap and then the surgeon will lift it up and then the machine will cut away and the surgeon will basically lift out the bit of the cornea that the laser has cut and which is probably the most common type of LASIK surgery. And then there's um, the newest form of technology called Smile Technology. And it's been available in Japan for quite a number of years, but Canberra Eye Institute is actually the only place in the Southern Hemisphere that is uh, trained in this technology and actually able to perform it. New Zealand do actually have the machine that um, can perform that uh, procedure, but they actually don't have any surgeons that are trained in it. Um, I'm probably going to have the smile technology where basically, um, the machine makes a small incision in, in the eye. So not a full flap. Um, and basically it then cuts the cornea underneath the eye. And then the surgeon, all I have to do is pull out that bit of cornea through that small flap. It is safer because there's less chance of the flap reopening at um, another point. However, if you're young, it can be an issue because um, because I'm only 21, it is likely that my script will change when I'm in my 40s um, just from natural aging. You know, a lot of 40-year-olds need reading glasses, so they're long-sighted. Um, or whatever. If you have the one where they make the flap, they basically can just lift that flap up and retouch the treatment um, at any time that you need to. 
However, if you have the smile technology, they can't actually recut that flap. So if you need to have adjustments to your script later on down the track, you'll probably have to have PRK. Um, I am only 21, so it is likely that my change, my script will change in 20 years' time. Um, however, the smile technology is the safest form, um, particularly if you want to do extreme sports, um, skydiving, um, if you're in the Army, if you work deep sea, if you work in the Air Force, they recommend that you have PRK because there's no flap that can get dislodged. That doesn't mean that if you have the flat one, you can't go on an aeroplane or anything like that. That's totally fine, but it's just more like if you're doing it every day sort of thing. Um, so I probably will have the smile. So they've told me I'll get in there at 9 a.m. Um, they'll have a quick consultation with me again just to make sure that I still want to go through with the procedure and I know the risks. Basically, the risks are um, any infection that would be like to a normal surgery, so those normal surgical risks of infection. Um, also, if you don't have a thick enough cornea for the procedure, there is the potential that the cornea um, structure can collapse on itself and you will need to have a cornea transplant. Now, that's the worst case scenario. Um, and the surgeon said it pretty much never happens.